So, <coughs> composition. Um, I finally decided to invert uh, the Photoshop uh, workthrough and the composition composition chapters. Uh, it makes uh, it makes it makes more more sense in that uh, in that order. So. So here's the file that you're going to have in the uh, PSD folder. <coughs> and um, this is the final uh, composition, uh, fi final value sketch that I, I used uh, as a reference. And um, I'm going to, to lead you uh, through the different steps that I took. And uh, in, the, in the full process, you, you, you'll see me uh, doing this um, real time. But uh, to go quickly through this, what I did is um, um, I, I made a render in Keyshot uh, from uh, my uh, base figure study. And um, at, um, at that point, uh, I had absolutely no idea where uh, I wanted to go from there. I knew about my uh, lighting direction. Uh, I knew about my uh, my figure uh, angle. Uh, I knew it was something around uh, this uh, this angle. But apart from that, uh, I I had not no real uh, idea. So what I started to do is just to to add uh, some some dynamic to to the frame, just to to start to have something and. Uh, this is a this is a trick that I use from many painting I uh, I saw from uh, the classic area where they start to have um, this um, top uh, top left uh, very dark value with a with a L shaped composition. Um, at that point, what I'm looking for is uh, abstract shapes. Uh, I really hunt want to avoid to think into semantic. I, I, I don't want to care about what those shapes are because at this point that could, they could be anything. I just want to care about all those abstract value masses uh, interact one with each other and uh, the dynamic uh, they are created. So now I've started to define um, more strong black values. And uh, at this point, I, I already knew I wanted to to have some strong lines uh, leading through the breast and the, the face of the figure. I just switch in a black and white to make sure I, I was only considering the, the values. So what you see here, A, B, C, D, E, are different uh, snapshots of the composition that I took, uh, just so I can refer to them later on and, um, and see if uh, my, my new version is an improvement or maybe if there is something I, I was preferring in, the, in one of the older stages. Uh, so um, I, I didn't keep all of that on spot layers. It was uh, just snapshots. And at this point, this is very rare. I really started to have a, really something I was liking about these very strong diagonal shapes which act with this one, which is really, really straight, really, really horizontal, and with this, with this almost square shape here. And um, I really like the, the tension it was, it was creating in the canvas with those, those white shapes here. And um, it's difficult to, to find the, the correct uh, vocabulary, but what I'm looking for here is one. Um, very few, very few shapes. Uh, the few birds better, and obviously there is a point where there is so few shapes that it doesn't make sense. So there is a good balance to find, but 
fewer shape is, is always better for me. Um, strong shapes, very, very with a lot of straight lines, you know, because it's it's very easy to introduce curves, but it's it's kind of difficult to have to have straight lines in an abstract composition like that, especially uh, no parallel, not too much parallel straight straight lines. You see, um, so I, I really like here all those those two black shapes are meeting together here. It's really creating this kind of the of a of a path to to go to go out. And uh, obviously, when I mean go out, it's not generally what you want in composition. You you don't want to uh, the eye of the viewer to to go out of frame. You you really want to keep it inside. So yeah, I was testing if by adding a strong shape here, but I didn't really like it. So I came back to that. And if you look here, there was already in C something I really liked. And I, I started to to really tight the this and uh, make this more more obvious. And at this point I'm I'm kinda I'm kinda liking what what I have. I have straight lines, I have dynamic shapes. Um, they don't have the same surface area. They, they are few shapes. This is what I'm looking for. So here I, I was looking for a variation because I didn't really like that this white shape, the fact that it connects to the border of the frame, I, I didn't like that. So I wanted to find a way to arrange that, that shape so it didn't connect it and um, avoid the, the viewer to, to wander outside of the frame. Oh. Okay. So this is this is the, the, my my first pass of um, of uh, my abstract composition. So at this point, uh, what I usually do is I try to make sense of the shapes, and um, while doing that, why what I also try to do is to unweld those shapes because now you know in this in this big. Um, let me grab my magic wand. And something else I, I forgot to mention. When I'm doing those, those composition uh, sketch, I, I try to work in very tiny, or I try to have my, uh, my navigator windows, which is set up like that, for example. So even even if I'm going like that, if I'm doing adjustments, in fact, I'm staring as an at the navigator. I really want to have a, a tiny view of the image. This way, I can grasp, I can encompass the whole image. Yeah. So what I was saying is this shape, actually, this big mid gray shape, you know. It can't possibly be only one thing. It wouldn't make sense. So at this point, what I'm interested in when I start to unwell the shapes is to try to, to not only make sense of these shapes, but doing so in a way that I create more semantic shapes inside. And and what really makes a composition, I, I think, very very um, dynamic is when you start to have some semantic shapes that are spread across several abstract shapes. And uh, you'll see what I mean in here. Uh, just to, to give you an idea, for example, just imagine that you have, for example, something that is laid out just here. And for some reason, maybe because it could be, for example, a piece of fabric, and maybe because of uh, light and shadows patterns, maybe because of its um, local colors, you know, then this object starts to be one semantic shapes, but it's spread across several abstract shapes. And uh, this is something I'm, I'm targeting. I'm, I'm just starting to, to, to kind of reach 
um, not really rich, but kind of understand this. And uh, uh, I, I really like this process. So here, what I, in that in that um, in that path, it's more of a rough sketch. Uh, what I did is exactly what I explained before. I, I try to make sense of those abstract shapes. And as you can see, this is the very same composition, but now uh, the, the shapes are unwelded and they start to, to represent something. And um, hmm. Okay, so from here, what I did is that I, I think I laid, okay. I like this in overlay just to have um, some kind of reference to work over. So I, this is my initial initial uh, composition composition sketch, and uh, it's been I put it in overlay at, at 40 50 percent. So it 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 gives me an indications. And for surrealism, I have more. Okay. Ah, okay. That's why. That's why this is on a semi-transparent uh, uh, layer. Whatever the um, whatever the technique that I use, what I try to do generally is, is to have uh, some kind some kind of guide over here that uh, that give me the, the the reference of the value sketch, and uh, after that I try to lay out value painting and uh, textures. So at that point, I, I thought, okay, this dark shape here could be uh, a piece of fabric because uh, I was still in the figure study kind of a thing. So I thought, okay, I'm going to lay out a lot of fabric. I wanted to have a lot of fabric to 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 really play with with the wrinkles and folds and so on, and maybe have different materials. Um, and I knew, you know, to have something this black. In, a, in an environment where you have a diffuse light, um, you kind of have, you kind of, you kind of need to have a reflective material and um, a dark environment, uh, because with with a very ambient light, even a very a very dark value is going to have a kind of a lighter value that that a pure black. But uh, if you have a reflective material. Which is not 100% reflective, but still have a very dark color value. Uh, you are going to have those ver those very uh, deep darks. So here, just using very little colors, I, I start to to give for, for myself some some indications of uh, of light. Just putting a bit of yellow in the light, just to to hint myself that okay. There is a ray of light here, and these white shapes that I wanted to unweld and to make sense of it is in fact um, li uh, a light of a light on the ground, uh, a light versus shadow pattern on the ground. So I am adding a bit of texture to to hint of uh, of the perspective. Uh, a bit of glow to to really show. Uh, this is not that uh, I'm doing mostly for myself, but this is also something I I could send to my to my client at some point just to to have feedback. Okay, working just on the on the proper values, bringing back some deep darks here. Okay, refining that so it looks more like something um, plausible. And these are very, very few tricks. So now I, I try to get back uh, my initial sketch value, as you can see here. And uh, something uh, I can mention, when you have this uh, value sketch here, uh, let's say I have, let's have a look. Let's open the color. OK. Now, okay, so I have a value of zero here, okay, 
and I have a value of 100 here. I have two values. Okay, this is a 2 and this is 5, which means that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 different values in this image without the the uh, all the <coughs> gradients on the figure and uh, if i want if i want my abstract shapes to hold as a as a common shape later on when i i'm adding some semantics i don't want the variations the variation of value in this area to be um, too wide because if i'm going so wide that in here i have big shapes that are almost five in values, which is I'm going from two to five. You know, these shapes won't, won't hold together as an abstract shapes and it starts to split and it starts to bring a lot of complexity in the image. And it's going to start to, to break the, the um, simplicity and the minimalism of the abstract composition. So even, even if I'm bringing some variations of value in there, while I try to make sense of, uh, of these abstract shapes, I have to keep it in a narrow range of value. This way, these abstract shapes will still hold uh, as, a, as, a, as a shape. So now I'm going in there. It was a 22, so a 2, 22 here. It's a 34, so I've moved here from a 2 to a 3 on a scale of one, of a 0 to 10, okay? But it's still not, not close enough to a 5. So the eye will, will still relate this value as this whole shape. Same here, I, have, I had here a, a 0. Now I still have a 0 here, and here I'm going up to uh, one, 16, you know, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even close to a two. I could be too close to a two, uh, too close so it starts to break. So this abstract shape starts to break and become two different shapes. So when um, later on I, I'm working on my image, I try to, to keep that in mind and uh, there is always a point where it's not possible to be that uh, obsessed with the with the values, but the closer I get from the initial sketch, the better. Okay, so I'm just breaking some some edges, just to start to to hint about uh, about edge flow. Okay, so this is it. And um, later on in the process, um, I've been showing this. Uh, sorry for that. I've been showing this initial uh, comp sketch uh, to a friend of mine, and uh, uh, it's uh, Aurore Folny, and she pointed to me that maybe this figure is way too much in the middle, and. Uh, so I decided to, to listen to her and try something else. So I, I, I did a retake of my, of my first value sketch, which is this one, and I just moved it away. And I, and I had to make a few changes to do that because um, you see that initial line, which is here, and uh, I wasn't too happy with it anyway. But uh, now, I had to keep it the same way, but to move, to move some other line because I still wanted those lines to point straight to her breast area. So nothing special here, just uh, just a retake of the of the old of the old value sketch. And uh, in this one, this is really where I I decided. Okay, now. I don't want to make a figure study. I want to make something closer to to, uh, to uh, an old master study. So I started to look very very close at Phaedra, Phaedra, Phaedra by uh, Alexandre Cabanel, the image I I show you, show you before, and um, I just wanted to use this image as a 
kind of a of a support to study uh, Cabanel's work. And I've been staring a lot at this image and, and try to understand all the different elements were lying together and uh, the different choices he made about the values, about the colors, and so on. And uh, later, uh, maybe not in this in this uh, part of the tutorial, but most more in the in the full process, you'll see me uh, at different stage re referring to this painting uh, a lot. So um, here, same thing. I, I've tried as much as possible as possible to to keep uh, my shapes. Uh, even though I started to make some concession uh, to to make it uh, maybe more readable, because if there is too much black in that image, it it will start to be difficult to make to make sense of the shapes. But uh, I also decided that okay, there is really a few parts I want I want to keep uh, with very strong blacks, and it was those two pieces of uh, of fabric around her body, which I knew based on the skin tones and um, and shadows will be kind of a mid-gray, um, which may bring me some problem later on, because as another friend of mine pointed me later, this uh, white piece of sheet uh, was so bright and uh, I added some glow later on that it, it was starting to steal the show from the figure, which I don't want it to. But at least this gave me a good indication of what I wanted to do here. I knew I wanted to have some, some kind of a, of a Greek uh, environment with some kind of, of, a, of bed with uh, fabrics. Here I wanted to have a, a fur rug, um, a cushion, um, a, a curtain behind her. And here I wanted on the wall to have some some patterning, some uh, some nice ornamental things that would um, that, that that would really give a, a 2D graphical uh, uh, read to this image too. And with this weird shape you see here, what I was trying to do, what I was thinking is okay, maybe to keep close enough to my to my uh, value sketch. You know, I could have the wall uh, having some patterning with a strong change in uh, values. You know, maybe some some kind of inversion. You know, uh, in the patterns. But uh, this wasn't something I could find in any references. But mm, no problem with that. I could just decide to do it. But uh, later on, I'm not going to do that because um, I, I I'll be doing some other choices. And uh, just for for myself and for fun, because I, I love those, I decided to to take this uh, composition and just create a more abstract one that would really focus uh, based on the information that I've decided in here, that would really focus on uh, on the abstract shapes and to do something very clean and and uh, very uh, graphical. And this is the sketch I'm going to refer to up to the end. This is going to be my my uh, my value sketch reference almost. So here it is for the composition. Abstraction. I'm trying to define very abstract shapes. I'm not looking at at anything else than than a relationship of the shapes, one between another. I'm trying to focus on straight lines. And um, dynamic angles, few shapes, very simple, minimalist. Make sense of the shapes. Here it is again. Abstract shapes, semantic shapes. And this is it for the composition.